We're back with the Silver Dollar Chevy Stepside, and we're going to get started on the bodywork in this episode. I'm going to rip off all the front sheet metal. I found a complete rust-free bed that we will be using. But after we get the sheet metal off, I'm going to tackle these floors, or lack thereof. The reason I'm going to pull the front sheet metal off first is because that's going to allow me to access the cab mounts and stuff like that a little bit easier without this fender in the way. Let's not waste any time and get started. There's a couple three things we're going to end up needing to salvage off of this sheet metal. One of them is the hood latch here. Well, that hood's destroyed now. It ripped the uh, welded on nut right out of there. Probably something to do with that giant mouse home up there. You know, we could probably save these hood savers on it too. Well, well let's salvage these if we can. They're just secured with self-tappers, of course. As I mentioned, these are installed backwards. See this slotted hole there? That goes under the hood hinge, back here, so that it actually, like, does something. Ah, I hate doing this by myself. I feel like I'm gonna break the window up. The key to this is pull the back bolts out allow the hood to rock forward on the hinges if you're doing it by yourself. I mean, the key to this is to not do it by yourself, but, you know, you guys know how it is. So stop it. I see what you're thinking. I don't like it. Whoa, easy there, girl. Easy as she goes. Easy. At least I don't gotta worry about, like, hurting anything. That always helps. Okay. If I let this fall, it's taken out my camera for sure. Do something right now, Dalton. Don't just let it happen. Timber! That was a little late on that. Snag these uh, hood hinges off, even though they're, well, they're completely wasted. Now, the hinge itself is not very expensive. It's like 40 bucks, but the spring is like another 40 bucks. So we'll try to salvage the springs, I guess. Aha! You know, this one, well, I was about to say it's pretty good. Cool. Um, maybe I should just not talk. I don't think the core support needs changed. It doesn't look bad at all, actually. At least from here. I mean, I'm sure we'll tear into it. It'll be trashed. You know, that's, that's how my life works. On this channel, we don't fix stuff that ain't broke. All right, I mean, if it ain't rusty, or if it's, like, not that bad of rust, I don't really care. I can't see it. It makes no difference to me if I can't see it. It does not affect the vehicle in any way. Who cares? There's like 15 gazillion bolts that hold the fenders onto a round I square body. These aren't really what I would call worth saving. They are better than no headlight bezel. So not good enough for this truck. Maybe good enough for another truck down the road. This thing ought to be awfully grateful that somebody says, oh, it's not good enough for this truck. Yeah, you know, the turn signal lenses are actually in remarkably good shape. Look at that. A little cleaning, like, you know, throw them in my dishwasher. They're gonna look good. They're not supposed to be orange. They're supposed to be clear with an amber bulb. Adios. You know, good thing about this thing being as rusty as it is, I don't really think there's that much holding the front end on. I mean, I'm thinking we pull a few bolts out and it just plump. These inside the fender well bolts are always the worst ones. They never come out easy. Prove me wrong. Old silver dollar. Well, I'll be danged. Oh man, this baby wants to live like you wouldn't believe. Wow. Uh -huh. Are you kidding me? There's still enough of that battery tree left to hold that on. You know, it takes a lot to make these trucks fall apart, you realize as you tear into one. Or save the factory jack and stuff. All the brackets are still in there too. It's little things like this that make the big differences. Yeah. Sayonara! You know, whenever you got a vehicle that actually starts to look better as you rip parts off of it, you know you got a good one. Goodbye. Is that it? Uh, pretty close to, to it. I am, I am venturing closer to it. We gotta pull the speedo cables off of this. And what this basically is, is a kind of mechanical computer, right? You put your 
input in the bottom and then you put your output on the top. There's gears and all that garbage in here and you control it with an electronic solenoid right here that allows vacuum to flow in or out of this guy and as you set your cruise control this thing will suck in or release or whatever pulling on this cable right here and that would give you your throttle actuation thingy. They're not only garbage, they're also occasionally dangerous, <laughs> so, you know, it, it is what it is. We'll have to get a new speedometer cable. Try not to get tetanus from this. Good God, got some extra plug wires. I didn't even know that was there. It's gonna fall on my leg, isn't it? That's the price you pay grown in a, a beauty like this. You know, the entry price is low. The medical bills are high. Ah. Time to return you to the great steel mill of the sky. It looks so much better without the fenders and hood on it. I mean, just, just because it's not terrible. Like, you look at this now and you're like, oh hell, that's a buildable truck. You know, we got lots of cleaning and stuff to do on the old core support here, but I'm not going to dig into that right away. The floors are number one priority. We gotta get this cab straight. And if we don't, well, we're gonna be in for a hard time. And you, I mean, a lot of that is actually the door pin and the hinge, but it's also the cab flexing and falling apart. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the seat out of here again, just so I got more room to work in here. Where the hell do you start with something like this? And that's something, you're gonna ask yourself when you take on a project like this, right? There's no way to fix this correctly. The only way to fix this correctly is to throw this truck cab away and put a new one on, right? We're gonna butcher the ever-loving hell out of this. And it's still gonna be a lot better than it was. This kick panel is missing from about here down, right? So. What we're going to do is not replace the whole kick panel. I'm going to put the new kick panel in to where the seam is hidden underneath this plastic cover here, right? So basically, I'm going to try to line this up in here. Then I'll cut this down and just set this up in here. We'll shoot a couple screws in it. I will tack weld everything in, but we're going to self-tap screw everything in so we know where we want it because there's going to be a lot of adjustments because look at that door right the gap here closed i can literally fit my hand in it around here it's not too bad on the front but also look here so we need to jack the whole door up which is not moving the door mind you it's moving the damn truck and tweaking it back into shape then we're going to have to put a bottle jack or a port of power here and push this. I can move it with my hand. I know it'll move. So we're going to move that forward about half an inch or so after we pull it back up. But that's why we got to start with the actual cab support here. Let's see. I think we put the kick panel in. Then we put this in. Right? There's your cab support. It goes in somewhere in that neighborhood. And we'll just screw everything together and then I'll get in there and burn it all solid and it'll be ugly and that's fine because we won't see any of it. We also have to put in the inner rocker. So yeah, it goes something like that. I don't know exactly what. We'll cross that river when we get there. You can kind of see now with that cover out of the way that Here's what I mean, guys. Whenever you see me overlap panels and stuff like that from, from the factory, right right here, see that? It's still here after 50 years, okay? It's not that big of a deal. So we're just going to do a little exploratory surgery here. If I pulled hard enough, it would probably come off. And I do have a spot weld cutter. But here's the problem. I don't care. I don't know. What do you think, buddy? I say you just stick it over and just load it back good. to the floor. Uh, nothing here scares me. It's just it is attached to the the actual outer cab brace here. That's the part that oh, man, that's... is pretty bad. Uh, so how about I just cut this off? We'll cut all the rust out so the rust isn't going to spread because it won't be there. And it really won't make any difference because nobody will ever see it. 
And if I didn't have a YouTube channel, you would never know. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and chop out this floor just so it's out of my way. <laughs> huh. Yeah, the floor was really good. Yeah, man, these are great floors. <laughs> Lots to work with here. And anybody who says they would do this right, they would never in a million years touch this truck because of how rusty it is. I, I do know how to do it right. Fact is, I don't have the 500 hours of labor that it would take to fix this truck right. And neither does most people. Yeah. Frame looks great. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's nice. That's, oh. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> now see, this part of the floor is actually pretty good. And I'm going to leave that in there just so I've got something to attach the new floor pan to eventually. By the time I get to the point of putting the floor pan in this, probably going to be pissed off enough that I just don't care anymore. And all of a sudden, we just get back to brr, brr, brr. It's a good thing I put that new gas tank in right behind where I'm cutting. That way I can just slice right into it. And it's full of gas now. I think that's a pretty good start. You see, we've kind of just trimmed all the rust out of it. It's not perfect. It's okay. It's lasted this long. It'll last quite a while more getting every dime's worth out of these things. So I'm gonna cut out the outer part of this rocker because you can see ah, underneath this, this is what's left of the inner rocker. That, that, that's, there's the inner rocker of the whole side of the truck. If I can get something out easily like that, or if mother nature has done the job for me, well, okay. We'll go ahead and do it. I guess. I am kind of a perfectionist. Uh, the, these are actually slip-on rockers. They're made to go over your existing rocker. And I've got them in old blue. They've been in there for seven years in the salt, mud, dirt, whatever. And they haven't rusted out. It's amazing. So we're not going to use this bolt thing here. We're just gonna cut that off entirely. Pretty much gonna cut, so maybe we'll cut that part off. You know what, I think that, that'd probably do it, actually. I think that's it, isn't it? Yep, and then... You think that's it? I think that's it. And then cut the bottom off if you need to. No, no, the bottom stays, because that's what bolts the fender on. Screw it right on. Yeah, and then once we're done, then we weld it on. Right, yeah, yeah, we don't weld anything right away. That should be perfect. That's a lot better. Yeah. I like it. So, I think you guys know what happens next. You know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and shoot a self-tapper into it. Well, or a few. Okay. There's more truck here than there was just a few seconds ago. Let's see. So we went and looked at Swanee, the occasional farming truck, and uh, tried to determine where the hell the inner rocker goes. And it looks like it goes inside of the kick pan. Something like that, maybe. It feels right up here, and that kind of matches the curve up here. But back here, that's a problem. It will pull forward. I see. Once I we could put scoot that. this back a little. It could come back half an inch, probably. And then if we bring this forward a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, the only thing to do at this point, guys, if you're getting discouraged and you don't know what you're doing, just wing it. What are you gonna lose? This freaking panel was like 12 bucks. Unbolt that cab brace and support. And then install a new bushing and all that crap, right? We are gonna try to actually unbolt it and remove it. So I'll see you in a minute with the sawzall. Now we can access that. Now I can cut the nut off of it. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm actually doing anything or if I'm just bending everything. I don't know. I think you're just bending everything. I think you're right. Oh, God. Get out of here. We're going to put a jack right here. Yep. Lift this up. 
get this squared back up. Oh yeah, there it goes. We're gonna reattach this using that Mustang underhood brace there. And uh, yeah, then we're gonna hope for the best. Uh, maybe like a few more? <laughs> no, it's not working at all. <laughs> Great. There. I think, I think we got something going now. Yeah. And I'm not going to put angle iron in it or anything because this is just sheet metal. I mean, damn, that almost fits just like that, doesn't yeah. it? I say we just leave it. Just screw it in there? Yeah, it's got the holes and everything for it. Oh, we got nothing to lose. What are we going to do? Yeah. Screw it up? No. Well, I'm going to continue to shoot self tappers into this. And see, it's important to note that we've reached a breaking point of sorts. You see, now that we've already begun to screw parts from a mid-60s Ford sports car into our 1976 Chevy Stepside pickup, well, really, there's nowhere to go but up from here, right? Now that we've crossed the line of butchery, butchery may continue. A lot, probably. So buckle up, because it's butcher time! So once we put this brace in, and then we put another plate on top like it had before, Yeah. that will hold it in. And we will actually do that. All right. It's a no fit. And I can see that this whole thing is just caved in. And what I'm going to try to do is port a power. Well, it's moving it all right, isn't it? Yeah, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, a that's lot work. better. <laughs> we could just keep that on there and Forever. Do it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could get the bolt now. I'm pretty sure these are supposed to be flat. But I'd love to get this port of power down here. Yeah, that would help a lot. Yeah, you need, that you anyway. Need to notch it. But, but we definitely have it spread to the correct width now. We did a thing. And so, yeah, we're just gonna cut what like this. A little of that. This doesn't fit. It's just not exact. It's close, but it's it's about a half inch off. So we're gonna try to bolt this thing in and then suck it down when we tighten it. Is it long enough? Yeah, it needs to be longer. Longer? Yeah, I can barely see. Maybe there's a long you know, if they made this bolt mm -hmm. half an inch longer. It would work a lot better. And that's how much, that's as much as I can poke through. It looks pretty good. Is that as far as you can it. go? I think I got it. I'd take the washer off, but I got it. All right. It's not cross-threaded. Well, it's been about a week since I've been out here. And I've just been kind of piddling with this thing. Finally, after much pain and gnashing of the teeth, I finally kind of realized what to do. I ended up having to use a longer bolt to hold that down because the bolts supplied are way too short. It's still not good, you can tell by just looking at it, but everything fits a little better now after I've reworked everything about 400 times. I've kind of decided that this has gone from restoration to do the best I can with it. So what I had to do, throw a jack under the A pillar here. That has spread the cab out better than anything. And now the door gap it's actually pretty good. It even closed it up down here. I can live with that. And it's not bad all the way around. Uh, so this is what we where we want it. We want it to be right here. So I'm gonna shoot a lot of self-tappers in to hold it in place. And then we'll come back and weld it in. Well, it's all self-tapped into place. And you know, that could be permanent, but eh, not this time. We need the support. So you can see here, the door gap is freaking great now. This is definitely where we want it. However, if I lower this jack, the door moves quite a bit. Now, it's not bad. This is within the realm of I could adjust that out. All right, well, I'm gonna try to tack this stuff in. I cleaned it as best as I could, which is not very good. Is now a bad time to mention I have no idea what I'm doing? Hopefully I got this gas tank sealed up. Otherwise, well, uh, I ain't gonna be cold no more blowing right through the rust. Great. Nothing like a 110 flux cord to give you some pretty welds. Yep, something's on fire. 
I guess. God, it's ugly. But oh, whatever, it doesn't show, so that means it doesn't matter. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You see, the thing is, uh, the chicks don't really mind. All right, so I got some welds on the back side of the kick panel, just some tacks. You can see how beautiful that looks. Please insert Ray Charles joke here. Yeah, I'm too scared to weld along this because I'm afraid of, you know, blowing myself up. The rest of this, I dare say, is reasonably solid. Uh, except for, you know, the important parts. I don't know. Let's see if I did any good and let's let the jack down. Well, yeah. Oh, I screwed this piece of wood. Through. This is really all I care about is the door. And that is definitely close enough to make work. And dare I say, it's reasonably sturdy. See that now when I move this, it actually moves the whole truck instead of just that eight pillar. I think we did something right here. I, I do want to, I'm going to come back in here and try to weld this seam up a little bit more. But other than that, I'm fairly happy with this. Well, let's go ahead and rust proof all of this. So we need a plate like that one. It's just another piece of sheet metal, but it's just to help support the top of that brace. And so I've got some sheet metal over there. We're just going to kind of eyeball that and weld something in that, you know, sort of, kind of resembles that. Well, it's a good thing I painted all this so it's impossible to work around. Looks like it needs to bend up a little bit and set on that front brace there. This is heavy steel right here. Really heavy, actually. Maybe this will work. Oh, oh, look at that, look at that. Oh, it's right on the money. Now that we've got some kind of support in the cab now, I feel all right pulling the door off because this is where it's going to be, right? I might be here a while. Last call for square body door. Time to leave the station. Yo. Still pretty heavy. Fairly certain I need to pull this lower door hinge in order to fit the rocker. All right, we got out of that unharmed. You know, and the hinge pins actually feel perfectly fine in these. It was literally the whole truck flexing, not the hinge pin. We're gonna start off by just trimming out the rust that's here. And again, I'm gonna try to just, these are slip on rockers, so I am gonna try to just slip it over it. Right, let's see here. We're gonna cut off this. We're pretty much just gonna cut off this whole leading edge. Then we'll refit it and, you know, just keep nibbling away at it until we get this to fit halfway decent. Is If the metal's solid, you overlap it, put a little skin coat of mud on it, it will last forever. I got thinking about it. I'm pretty sure the floor goes in first, but whatever. I need to trim off the back end of this thing where it would normally go behind the cab corner because we're not gonna replace this cab corner. I got her clamped where I want her. I'm gonna come back here, trim off this back edge here, and try to get this to let it set down in there. I went ahead and throw a little extra metal in here. That's really pretty, you know. Anyway, I think I figured out what I need to trim off of this because it fits about as well as it So we gotta shorten it kind of overall and take this inside lip off. A little test fitting here. Uh, got the rocker kind of where I want it. Not quite where I want it back here. That's gonna take a little beating, but. You can see that we got a uh, little gap because this floor pan's a little fat right here. So we need to trim, just knocks that out, probably because I overlapped the kick panel. We will have to trim some of this. And then the actual cab brace is holding it up in the middle. So here's game plan is get this to fit, attach it on this side so it's smooth up against here, and then beat the ever-loving hell out of it to make it, you know, fit on the other side and, you know, <laughs> we'll cover it with some sound deadener and <laughs> what are you talking about? I've got it self-tapped into place here. I know this is not going to end well because the damn thing's like two inches out of whack. Let's see what happens if I just go to town on it real quick. Yep. Okay, okay, yeah. Gonna need a lot of liquid nails for seam sealer. Far from ideal, but it's as good as we can do. You can see right there that dent popping up. I mean, that's the cab brace. So short of cutting apart the entire cab, taking it off of the frame and starting from scratch, this is what we have. Time to start burning, I guess. It ain't good, but it's better than no floor.
Okay, well, that is a pitiful excuse for welding in a floor pan, but it is in there and it is solid as a damn brick now, which is great because that was really the biggest issue with this truck. Now it's onto the rocker, which actually fits pretty damn good. On the outside here, you can see that our hole lines up for the door stopper. And yeah, the right way to do it is to cut it out and then put this in there, but you know what? I. I'm thinking I just ding this in, bzz, weld that in, bzz, weld that in, a little bit of mud, you'll never see it. And guess what, old blue out there, the truck that everybody loves, think is beautiful and original? Uh, it's actually not even welded in, it's glued on and fillered and it's fine, has lasted for years and years and years. Hit this with the wire wheel real quick, clean off this rust. Now yeah, we'll just coat it with some rust-oleum here. Start burning again. It's not perfect. It's not even good. Considering it's flux core welder. But I am pretty damn proud of that. Considering it looked like that just a few hours ago. Not great, we'll have to butcher it a little bit, but um, we have to butcher it less than I was afraid we would have to. That's a win. Where we're gonna start on this side is the same deal as we did on the other side, is cut all the rust out. On this side, we will have to cut the cab corner out, so that's gonna be an added, you know, challenge there. Try to jack up this door until it fits again, just like we did the other side. And as long as we can fit the door, get it braced up, then we can work from there. Same thing, again. It's only like another eight hours of work. <laughs> Looks like the cab brace is quite a bit better than that side, but the rest of the floor is much worse. And plus we got the cab corner to deal with, so we really got our work cut out for us this time. Now I decided I'm gonna use a spot weld cutter to remove this plate, so the way you do that, kind of fish around for the spot weld you'll see it when you grind it already cut one out here looks like there's another one right there spot weld cutter here and to get her spinning boom and I think that might be better I think that was my big mistake I made over there was being too violent with that cab brace got the cab brace out here I got a 4x4 holding up the cab over here this side's not near as bad as that side. However, this kick panel, it bolts the inner fender to it on the inside there. Remember we cut the top of that one off? Well, we're gonna need the whole thing over here. So we will, I already ground it down. We're gonna try to find all the spot welds for it. Might be a little hunt and pecking going on here, but let's see what we can do. If we can get this side to pull off, then we can flex it and we'll be able to see where the spot welds are at the top a lot easier. One kick panel, we'll call that our kick panel. So I'll put a couple self tappers in there just to hold it for now. Okay, just to clarify, I'm not insane. This is the bolt that's provided with it. This is the cab mount. It no work. It no thread. Like, it's not even the right diameter. I figured out what it is. Apparently this Ford motor mount bolt I found is the exact thread for it. So it's not the bolt's fault, it's these have the wrong threads in them. Made good progress here. Everything's self-tapped into place. Uh, this fits way better than the other side did. I don't think we'll have the same issues, but we're way high on the kick panel here. I'm gonna have to pinch that shut and burn that. And we're not actually way high on the kick panel. It is supposed to run downhill like this. I, I put it exactly where it was. That's just the nature of aftermarket parts, right? So we'll make do. I'm probably gonna end up having to cut this little step out of here, I imagine. We're in here now, we welded her up. We got her all spray painted, so it's, you know, wow, the conqueror's restoration, how about that? Well, you know what, it's a damn sight better than it was. The truck's nice and sturdy again. we have still got to put the outer rocker in. That's really going to stiffen up, you know, this, because there's nothing in here. Had a hell of a time getting anything to stick to that seat bottom, so that's going to get more stuff to remove off this truck. The better it gets. Ew, rusty son of a bitch. 
shit. All right, got it. Easy. Take a look at this. Oh my god. All right, we got to trim off a little bit of rust up here. We're going to find some way to reattach this at least a little bit. I mean, it doesn't got to be good. Rust free. Free rust. All right, so that new cap corner goes clean up into here. We don't need this whole, we don't need the whole deal, you know. Now this would be a lot easier if I pulled the, uh, the bed off first. The step side does afford us a little bit of opportunity to, at least you can see it, you know, on a typical fleet side bed, you can't get to any of this stuff. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what a piece of crap. <laughs> I wonder how hard this thing would be to get off. Probably harder than I want to try, but... It's worth a shot, I'm trying to get this step off so I can get in there a little better. Yeah, you might notice the inner cap corner has some issues, and uh, the key word there is inner, which means you can't see it, which means I'm not fixing it. I started to try to unbolt this, and realized there's a lot of rusty bolts on it. So, uh, you know, it, it, it don't want to come off. I'm just going to delete it. This is nice, and that's razor sharp. I'm going to cut my hand open on that. Almost assuredly. I think we got to put the floor pan in first just to make it go a little bit easier. So I am going to have to trim this kick panel here because it actually has the same piece of stamping that the floor does right here. Well, Buff from Buff's Garage, what do you think? I think it looks really good. I think it has a floor. How did the seatbelt catch on fire? Was it that screw I cut? Oh. Yeah, right there. Oh. It smells like a burning body in here now, that I would know. <laughs> Most of this floor self-tapped into place. Now I'm going to make a few relief cuts here to try to close this gap over here. Try to lean that metal over to where I could burn it onto something. Anything would be fine. The, the rest of it is not bad. We'll have to make a little patch for that. But... It's ugly as sin, it's booger welded as hell, but it's in there and it's solid as a brick, boys. I tack this back together. That's good enough. It's more than the factory did. Well, I threw the uh, doghouse back on there. We'll bolt that in while we're here. I want to grind down this rocker and take some short strand fiberglass and mold this in, including here, because this shows. And the rest of this stuff will be covered up by sound bender. I don't got to be perfect here, but we got to rough it up enough that this glass will stick. It's short strand fiberglass. This stuff is waterproof. It's meant to stick to bare metal. They build entire cars out of the stuff. It works pretty damn good for decades. This can of short strand is pretty old stuff. Give me a minute to stir this and maybe put it in front of my heater time in front of my heater. It's a little more pliable. We got a special surprise. I got a new welder, Rylon. Uh, they actually sent me a stick welder and a multi-process welder that I am thrilled to try out because, like, it seriously couldn't have planned it any better. My crappy flux core welder you see we've been using is literally melted inside. <laughs> so, uh, like, it's still working somehow, but it doesn't seem very safe. Alright, that's all just kind of lightly glassed in. Just enough, we'll grind that down. Then a skin coat of body filler, and it'll be good to go. Probably not going to get to that this episode, but we'll get her next time. Here's the fancy new welder, and boy it is. It's TIG, MIG, I don't know. What is this? TIG? Small, lift, TIG, MIG, 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 something? I don't know. I'm not a welder. I don't know anything about welding, but it's a nice looking machine. It's lightweight, and I've already got it set up. It took me like two minutes, and I have no idea what I'm doing. You know, you turn it on, right? I've never had one that did this. It actually, you pick your process, right? And it'll actually calculate voltage and wire speed for you. I don't know. What does that mean? I have no idea. Anyway, this is ready to go. It's in here, mocked up, sort of half-ass. And uh, we'll just buzz it on here real quick, see how she does. Then we'll mount the cap corner, and then I'm done for this episode. You can see that my old one is kind of uh, melted. 
Still works. I don't know. Need a free welder? Wow. What? It's so quiet, too. Oh my god, that's a flux core weld that looks halfway decent. Hey, who's got the hookup on uh, shielding gas in Kansas City? Because uh, now that I have a decent welder, I sure like I might actually get into this a little bit, huh? This little unit here is 600 bucks ish It's a little under that on Amazon. Right now, there's a 30% off coupon for it, too. You might check into that. This is a MIG TIG 110 or 220. Uh, I mean, it came with everything you need to weld, and it auto-sets everything. You just go to town. I mean, if this is my kind of welder right here. And the little arc welder they sent me is only 130 bucks. so if you just need a little machine for around the farm, that'd be the one for that. I am incredibly impressed by this. Check down in the description below for a link to this. Okay, well that's, you know, more or less, um, attached-ish. I don't know. It's solid, though. Brr. Make this cab corner fit properly, I'm gonna have to cut the inside edge of this rocker out all the way down. And that's because I'm not doing it right. And that's because I don't care. So basically the thought process behind this butchery is that by the time I put this on here, right, now I could butt weld it in there or whatever. It doesn't matter if I just it right over the top or if I butt weld it in there, I'm going to have mud all the way up to that body line, a skin coat to blend it into the cab. Anybody who thinks otherwise has never been in a body shop. Either way, it doesn't matter. I'm still putting the mud in there. I can make it a little easier on myself right now if I do it this way. That's pretty good. I like it. I like it a lot. We're going to want it to be about to here. So we'll just cut this right here. And uh, then we'll test fit again. So I got this pretty much where I want it. And it fits really nice. Overall, it may take a little bit more trimming, but not bad. And everything here is going to get a skin coat of filler, so it'll all just blend together eventually. So option A, cut this, butt weld it. Or option B, which is, you know, a little more in line with this channel, is beat the hell out of this, ding it all in. <laughs> That'll be lower than this, which means now <laughs> I can tack weld to it, and then when we fill it, it'll be right on the money. Love it. That's hideous, but. It is what it is, and it is attached, and it's solid. We'll grind it down. I'll finish that out. And if I hadn't made a video on it, you would never know. All in all, guys, I think that's a success. The truck has floors, rockers. It's attached to itself again. It's way, way better. I didn't get as far as I wanted to this time, but I have 14 minutes left on a 64 gig SD card, which means I've recorded about seven hours of film, and it's just this. This is a long process. Doing this kind of metalwork stuff like this, even half-ass like this, I could do better. But the truck simply isn't worth it. And B, I, you know, to make this into a video, I can't spend 25 hours making those floors right. It, there's no way. Otherwise, you guys will see a video once a month, YouTube's algorithm will go, and then I am off the chart. This is what it is. And it's good enough that this truck will get back on the road, it'll look damn good, and then maybe the next guy can fix it correctly. Like, at that point, it will deserve. But next time, I think we're hanging at least one door. I still need this door. Uh, we'll finish out the floors. I got some sound editing materials, and uh, we'll use some sweet patina sauce on the floors to keep them from rusting. And uh, that's it. So we'll see you guys next time. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe, or else, and we'll see ya.